once you've familiarised yourself with the first position pattern for the natural minor scale, um, this lesson shows you a great way to sort of develop your ability to work with that scale over a sort of traditional flamenco style chord sequence. Now first let's just take a, a look at the chord sequence. Um, here are the chords we're going to use. You can either use open chords or bar chords. Let's just go through the sequence. First with open chords. So we start with two bars of A minor. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two bars of D minor. Two bars of E major. back to two bars of A minor. Then the whole sequence repeats, so you have to remember to stay on the A minor for the next couple of bars as well. happy enough to use bar chords, there are some advantages um, with this tune in using bar chords which you'll, you'll spot a bit later on. So if you can, if you're comfortable with bar chords, have a go at playing it like this. So A minor using an E minor shaped bar at the 5th fret, up to D minor using an A minor shape, still bar at the 5th fret, up to E using a a major shape bar at the 7th fret, back to A minor. Start again. Choose whichever approach to playing the chord you find easiest and quickest to learn. There's always uh, time to, to go to the other method later on, it won't matter. Okay, now ultimately with this, um, we're aiming to integrate both the lead and the rhythm. But when you're playing something like that, it's always easier to separate out the task. So once you're just on, on top of the, the chord changes there, Take your attention off that for a while and put it just onto the, the lead for a few minutes. Um, so let's look at that now and we'll look at uh, developing a few ideas with the lead side of it. A great way to play this style is to work very closely to the root notes of the chords. So let's start out by finding the three root notes on our natural minor scale pattern. Let's start with these three lower root notes, A on the 6th string, and D and E on the 5th string. Take a couple of minutes now to locate those notes and get to know them. So I'm going to demonstrate this using the bar chords, but exactly the same principle would apply if you were using the, the open chords instead. What we're going to do is we're going to play a few uh, lead phrases that literally link the root notes of each chord. Like this, starting on A. So that's starting on that A there. And then I play a few, phrase, uh, a few notes up the scale and back down it, returning to the note A. So effectively I've played a phrase that starts on A, 
and ends on A. And that is a nice way of anticipating the A minor chord. Then I play a phrase that starts on A, but I end it on D. And that anticipates the D minor chord. Then I start my phrase on the D. That's the chord we're leaving, if you like. But I'm going to make it land on the E, because that's the next chord. Then I'm going to start the phrase on E and run it back to A. Then I'll start on another A to A. A to D, D to E, E to A, A to A, A to D, D to E, E back to A, Now, always landing on the root note of the next chord isn't necessarily the best way to improvise under all circumstances, but developing the ability to do that does provide a sort of safety net. Often when you're improvising you lose your way, I think this happens to the best of us, and um, at that point it's useful to know your way back to, to root notes as a sort of end of phrase resolution um, to sort of rescue from, from situations where you've kind of lost your way a bit. So that's why that's a, a good knack to develop. So uh, that's where we're going to start with this. Once you've worked out a few phrases of your own that work like this, the next step is to work them in with the chords. Now, if your chord changes are up to speed, you can do this yourself by integrating lead and rhythm. Um, and that would work like this, with the open chord, two, three, four, one. You can do it with the bar chords. As we showed you just now. Now the bar chords have got a couple of advantages. There's the obvious one that you're in the vicinity of where we're working this scale. It's not this business of having to jump down the fretboard each time. Um, also it kind of with bar chords you can better get this slightly muted rhythm. In slow motion what I'm doing there is I'm playing the bottom string, then the rest of the chord, and then I'm relaxing the left hand just to kill the sound dead like that. So you get a kind of boom cha boom cha sound. Takes a bit of practice if you're not used to playing like that, but that's one of the advantages of bar chords. You're in control of all six strings, so you can turn the sound on and off more easily. The other thing is, you'll notice the root note that you're aiming for is always part of the chord, so you can be putting that shape down a little bit earlier. Notice there, for example, I shift that finger up so I'm in position to play that chord. And I mean back there, I put the whole bar down to get that last note and then I'm ready for the chord. If you 
find integrating the lead and the chords together quite difficult to begin with um, and I think most people will, it's quite quite tricky this. Um, then do make use of the backing track that's available from the toolbox to the right of the screen here if you click on the backing tracks tab. Now when you're working against the backing track you have to be aware that your lead phrase comes in on the AND beat after the first beat. So you come in on AND 2, AND 3, AND 4, AND 1. I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so I would count in 2, 3, 4, 1, AND 2, AND 3, AND 4, AND 1, AND 2, AND 3, AND 4, AND 1. And two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, and two and three and four and one, two, and three, four, and one. Now obviously the backing track's doing that part for you, so you just play and two and three and four and one. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one. Bit of a knack that, but it will come with practice. Once you've got the knack of ending your phrases on those lower root notes, then try and expand out to, to using the higher uh, root notes from the pattern. There are four of these. The A on the 4th string, 7th fret. D on the 3rd string, 7th fret. E on the 2nd string at the 5th fret. And another A on the top string, 5th fret. This opens up quite a bit more scope. So I've got an A there, a D straight across from it there, an E there, and another A there. So we can do some phrases like this. just made it home on that last one didn't I? Um, I was debating whether to go up or not. Let's try that again. We'll go the different route this time. So there you go, just a few little ideas how you can use those notes, that opens it up considerably. Finally, once you feel you've established your safety net with phrases that do resolve back to the root notes all the time, feel free to broaden out and improvise a little more freely and mix in some phrases that don't necessarily resolve back to the root notes. I'm going to demonstrate that now by playing out against the backing track and notice how I'm mixing my phrases between those that do resolve to root notes and those that don't. Okay, have fun with flamenco and I'll see you in the next lesson.